Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We look to the gates of the city, longing for the one who brings us life and hope, the one who triumphs over evil and despair. We're looking for the one who brings salvation, a durable hope, and a sturdy courage. Palm Sunday sets us out on a pilgrimage down from the Mount of Olives and into Jerusalem and down into the city. This very day, Jesus walked this same route with his disciples, stopping to untie the colt and then to have his disciples help him climb on the animal's back. Today, while we are sheltering in place and staying safe at home, Jesus walks this very same route undeterred, undaunted, full of courage. He brings us hope and healing and mercy to our lives, even though it does come at the cost of his own life. In worship today, you'll hear the story of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem and the story of his passion as well, told through the lens of several eyewitnesses, onlookers who are there, onlookers who now have a story to tell. Today, the word comes from six witnesses, from Dave Vandermeer and Kayla Johnson, from Mark Morris, Becca Torres Davenport, comes from Evans McGowan, and last from Andrew Frazier. All through Lent, we've been asking that great question, why are we here today? We learn that we are here because these witnesses were there. And in their own words, they will now share their own stories. Today, as our family of faith gathers virtually, watching on YouTube or via some other platform through Zoom or otherwise, we encourage you to gather around your computer screens, your cell phones, listen on the radio and hear worship come to you live and coming to you real. Even though we're not here in that special place that means so much to us, we are together in Christ, joined together as worshipers, as church school teachers and youth group leaders, as cooks and servers at the Delana Centers, as hosts at the Alpha House. We're here as members of the choir and of the bell choir. And we're all united and joined together by the deep love of God that comes to us in Jesus Christ. Our hearts and our spirits are joined together deeply and we're woven together into a great community and fellowship of love. We come to worship seeking hope. We come seeking healing and wholeness and that great love that transcends all barriers. Jesus Christ appears now, wherever we are, to whomever you are, accepting us, welcoming us. No matter who you are or where you are or whom you love, you are welcome here and we accept you into this fellowship of love. And we virtually, we virtually embrace you and say that you, we are glad that you are here among us, not just in this hour of worship, but in all that we do. In this moment, we give all glory, praise, and honor to our God, to Jesus Christ, our Savior, and to the work of the Holy Spirit that binds us together. And we give great thanks to our communications team, our tech crew, and all who make this worship possible. Everything about our response to the COVID-19 virus can be found on our website. If you wish to receive weekly updates, you can subscribe by going to our webpage and clicking on the links. A brand new church blog has rolled out. We are worshiping together and joining with bedtime stories told in the evenings. Our college students and youth group are connected virtually and there are countless ways that you can join in. And these uncertain times know that we are reaching out to you virtually in a myriad of ways. If you wish to receive our daily Lenten devotionals, please go to our webpage and click on that link and you'll be signed up. If you're struggling or concerned, if you have a, a pastoral need, we would like to hear from you. You may call the church office. You may also reach out to us and click on the prayer request link that you'll find on our webpage. We would relish the opportunity to connect and to pray with you. Again, we remind you all to reach out to one another in love by card or letter, by email or text, by phone call, and let all around you, neighbors and friends, members, and all our community know that we are connected in this time. Letting small groups continue to meet this week. There'll be a Bible study led by Ed Coster tonight at 5 p.m. via Zoom. 
There are many creative and faithful ways to join together through children and youth ministries. And we encourage you to click in and to be a part of one of those groups. And please do check our website frequently for we're updating and clarifying information all the while. On Easter Sunday, April the 12th, we'll have two worship experiences, one at 930 and then again another at 11. And we encourage you to gather around to worship together and to celebrate the great resurrection hope that comes to us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Find our first place. First Pres website, look on one of our emails, and you will find the links that will take you directly to worship. And now, reminded of all the ways that we can virtually fellowship and worship together, let us turn our hearts and minds for the God who reaches out to us in Jesus Christ, and listen now for these wonderful witnesses to speak to us of faith, of hope, and of love. Please join me in the call to worship. Come with your branches, hosannas, and songs. Fill the air with welcome to the Lord. Look, your king is coming too, humble and mounted on a donkey. The words of the prophet have been fulfilled. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. To Jerusalem. The disciples went and did what Jesus told them to do. They brought a donkey and a young male horse and put some of their clothes on the animals so Jesus could sit on them. 
A huge crowd of people put their clothes on the road like a carpet, and some people cut palm branches and put them on the road too. They did this to welcome Jesus like a king. Some people shouted so everyone could hear, Hosanna to David's son. Blessed is the one who comes in God's name. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus arrived in Jerusalem, many people were nervous and asked, what's going on? Who is this man? The people with Jesus said to them, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. I love a parade. When I was a kid, it was the 4th of July parade in Saginaw every summer. We decorated our bicycles and rode along with the fancy cars and the high school band. And of course, there was the Thanksgiving Day Parade on TV. When I got a little older, I watched the marches in the Civil Rights Movement, a very different kind of parade, or maybe procession would be a better word. They were very meaningful to me, all those people moving together, looking strong, committed, hopeful, maybe a little afraid. Even now there are parades that change the world. Many friends, women, men, and youth went to Washington DC for the Women's March in 2017. It was important for them and it was important for me. And much closer to home, every Sunday morning, we have our own parade as our young acolytes, the choir, the clergy process, the cross, the word, and the light. But the parade I am watching now is different. I'm not sure what to make of it. The crowds are there waving palms, shouting Hosanna, even throwing their cloaks on the ground in front of one man, one man riding on a little donkey. He doesn't look very important at all, but they are shouting as if he were the king, the son of David. I heard one man say, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. What in the world does that mean? I have heard that he is a prophet and that he has healed all kinds of horrible illnesses, leprosy, paralysis, even people stricken by evil spirits. That is amazing, of course, but it really doesn't explain this crowd and their behavior, their internal strength, their commitment, their hope. And strangely, this prophet, this healer, this man looks a little sad. I invite you to join together now in our prayer of confession. From long ago, the prophet Zechariah called to the people, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Sing aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. We said the day of our Lord will come tomorrow. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy upon us. The prophet Isaiah called to the people. Go through, go through the gates. Prepare the way of the peoples. Build up, build up the highway cleared of stones. Lift up banner over the peoples. The Lord proclaim to the end of the earth. Say to daughter Zion, See, your salvation comes. Your reward is with him, and his reward is before you. And so we waited with our palm branches and coats to prepare the road for our Lord. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Have mercy on us. The psalmist invited the people to sing, the stone that the builders rejected has now become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord is coming. The Lord rides in. Will we notice? Will we sing? Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on us. When I turned around, there was someone taking my colt. I asked them, what they were doing because we needed the cult for our family. But they said the Lord needs it. I'm still confused about why they needed my cult when there were so many other animals around. Well, where were they going? 
And would my coat be returned? Lost in my own confusion and their explanation, I did not know who to trust or how to explain this to my family. They just said the Lord needs it. And I hope the Lord will use it for good. Laying aside judgment, God will offer us redemption. Setting aside anger, God embraces us with love. Letting go of grief, God pours living water upon us. And this is the good news, friends. My cult has a purpose. My cult is fulfilling a purpose we never knew about. Then we can trust in the one who sent for my cult. Hosanna. I may not understand, but I can believe that it was for my good that the cult was taken. Blessed is the one who brings us to the kingdom of God. And peace be with each of you on this journey. cleansing of the temple. Then Jesus went into the temple and threw out everyone who was buying and selling there. And he kicked over the tables and chairs of the people who were changing money and selling doves. He said to them, my house was supposed to be a house of prayer, but you have made it a lair for criminals. Then the blind and lame came to Jesus in the temple, and he cured them. When the religious leaders saw the amazing things he was doing and heard children running and shouting through the temple, Hosanna to David's son, they became very angry and said to Jesus, Do you hear what these children are saying? Jesus said, Yes, I hear them. Haven't you read in God's word from the mouths of babe and children you have set up praise for yourself? Then Jesus left Jerusalem and went to Bethany where he spent the night. I was with my family. We were standing just outside the temple. It was a hot day and it was crowded, which made things kind of sticky. I couldn't see much because it was so many people there. But I had heard, started to hear loud noises and began to sound like chaos. I heard people talking about someone, a, a man, flipping over tables. I moved with my family, which moved with the crowd as we all pushed back to create space to see what was going on. And then I caught a glimpse of the man saying something to the crowd. He looked a little angry. I'd heard of this man before. 
This man did all sorts of miracles. He even raised a man from the dead. Can you believe that? And here he was healing people right before my eyes. We had heard stories about someone coming to save us, stories we were told since we were very little. There was a savior coming, someone to free us. I wondered, I wonder, could it be true? I heard someone yell, Hosanna to David's son. And then others followed doing the same. So I joined them. Hosanna to David's son. But then we were told to quiet down. And so the crowd quieted. But what I saw, I'll always remember. That man standing in the middle of the crowd and as my family turned to walk away, I whispered underneath my breath, Hosanna to David's son. A cheering, chanting, dizzy crowd had stripped the While Jesus and the disciples were eating together, Jesus took a loaf of bread and blessed it, broke it and gave it to the disciples. He said, take this bread and eat it. This bread is my body. Then Jesus took a cup and thanking God, gave it to the disciples. He said, drink this cup, all of you. This cup is my blood, God's new covenant poured out for all people for the forgiveness of sin. I promise that I will not drink from this cup again until the new day when I drink it with you in paradise. After this, they sang a hymn together and then went to a place called the Mount of Olives. I thought this was just another dinner for a group staying at the inn. I set the table while the food was prepared. I didn't know how important this meal was. They came in and I could tell they were hungry from their day. There was one among them who seemed to lead. He led them in prayer at the beginning of the meal. I watched as the others listened intently to each word he spoke. They enjoyed their meal and the company they shared, deep in conversation with each other. But I could tell the one who led them Jesus, I think his name was, had something on his mind. I had heard his name before. I had heard the stories, stories of healing, kindness to the unclean, putting the poor first. Who was this person that does those things? The one named Jesus sat quietly for a minute. One by one, each of his followers fell silent as well, watching him with fixed eyes. He took a piece of the flatbread that I had just brought to them, freshly baked, cooled, and crisp. And I remember exactly what he told them. 
He held it out for all of them to see and to hear him. Take this bread and eat it. This bread is my body. He passed the basket of flatbread around the table to each of his followers. Then Jesus picked up his cup and filled it with wine for the pitcher at the table. He gave thanks to his God, the God that he and his followers said is the one true God. And I knew in my heart at that moment that it is true. He passed the cup around to them and said, drink this cup, all of you. This cup is my blood, God's new covenant poured out for all people for the forgiveness of sin. I promise that I will not drink from this cup again until the new day when I drink it with you in paradise. I had tears in my eyes, but I didn't know why. God's new covenant poured out for all people for the forgiveness of sin? To forgive all my sins, truly showing me love? The stories were true. He is true. He is truly the son of God. I thought this was just another dinner. I didn't know how important this meal was. Then Jesus said to his disciples, you will all abandon me tonight. God's word says, I will strike the shepherd and all of his sheep will run away. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead and lead you to Galilee. Peter said to Jesus, even if everyone else abandons you, I will never abandon you. Jesus said to Peter, tonight, before the rooster crows at dawn, you will deny knowing me three times. Peter said to Jesus, even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. The disciples all said the same thing. While Jesus was being tried by the religious leaders, Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came up to him and said, I recognize you. You were with Jesus, the Galilean. In front of all the people who were there, Peter denied it, saying, I don't know what you're talking about. When Peter went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him and said to the people, I recognize this man. 
He was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, Peter denied it, this time making an oath. I swear I don't know that man. After a little while, the people came up to Peter and said to him, we recognize you. The way you speak gives you away. Then Peter got very angry, swearing once more, I don't know that man. At that very moment, the rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said before the rooster crows at the dawn, you will deny knowing me three times. Peter ran away and cried and cried and cried. I see a man crying in the courtyard. Surely he was with this Jesus of Nazareth, as the servant girl said, he who spoke with a foreign accent. Does he weep out of shame for denying and deserting his teacher? Or does he weep for the fate of his teacher, a fate he cannot stop? I wonder, who is this Jesus? Some say this Jesus is the Messiah. Some call him the son of God, the next in line to be our one true king. Surely there must be something special about him for people like this man to weep over him. Yet the priests have condemned Jesus to death for his blasphemy. I know I would be afraid to die. But if Jesus is who he says he is, then why doesn't he save himself? And if Jesus can't save himself, then I think I too might deny him, lest my fate be sealed with his. What an impossible choice for this crying man to make. To admit he knew Jesus would mean his fate would be sealed with his teacher to the point of punishment and probable death. Yet to deny knowing Jesus, he now escapes with his life. Although what good is a man's life is if he has denied what he believes and denied his true self. What if this Jesus is the promised one we have all been waiting for? What if this man is weeping not for himself, but for us? Because it is we who are making a mistake, and not he. If so, we are the ones to be pitied most of all. Lord, forgive this man. Forgive all of us, for we are very afraid, and we know not what we do. As we hear the Palm and Passion story, a story that is so familiar, yet one that strikes us year after year, a warm welcome to each and every one of you joining us this morning online or by radio. If this is your first time joining us, or perhaps your first time in a long time, we're so grateful that you are worshiping with us on this festive Palm and Passion Sunday. We would like to know that you joined us in worship this morning. On the front page of our First Prez website, there's a line that says, let us know you joined us. Please click that link and we invite you to sign our virtual pew pad. There's also a link to share your prayer requests with us. So please, let us know you were here and how we can be praying for you at this time. Friends, today especially we ask you to consider supporting two very important ministries. This Sunday, our monthly communion food offering will feed hungry children and families at CAN, the Community Action Network of Washtenaw County, which locally ensures that the basic needs, academic needs, and social and community building needs are met. Our other offering this morning is the One Great Hour of Sharing offering, through which Presbyterians are able to share the love of Christ with our brothers and sisters around the world. One Great Hour of Sharing supports those affected by disaster, hunger, and oppression, and provides clean water, sanitation, education, and opportunity. We ask you to help us keep our ministries alive in meaningful and effective ways, no matter the circumstances that force us to adapt and change. No matter where we are or how we serve, our hearts are with Jesus and we long to serve him and those he loves. We invite you to send a check in the mail or to give electronically by using our text to give option at 855-904-1523. Or by visiting the First Prez website and clicking on the link that says Give Online Here. 
If you wish to support either CAN or One Great Hour of Sharing, we ask that you indicate that on your gift. And friends, now let us joyfully bring our gifts to God.
The fifth reading, the Garden of Gethsemane. Then Jesus went with the disciples to a garden called Gethsemane. He said to his disciples, stay here while I go over there and pray. Jesus took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee with him, and he began to feel deep agony and sorrow. He said to them, this agony and sorrow is killing me. Stay here and keep watch with me. Jesus went a little farther and fell to the ground, praying to God, my father, if there is any way, please get me out of this. Please help me to want what you want instead of what I want. When Jesus came back to the disciples, he found them in a deep sleep. He said to Peter, couldn't you stay awake and keep watch with me for one hour? Stay awake and pray that you don't come into the time of trial with me. I know part of you wants to do whatever is asked of you, but another part of you is tired and weak. Jesus went away a second time and prayed again, my father, if there is no way to get me out of this unless I accept your will, I'm ready to do it your way. Jesus called his disciples and again found them asleep. They couldn't keep their eyes open. He let them sleep and went away to pray for a third time, saying the same words he had said before. Jesus came back to the disciples and said, are you still sleeping? It's time for the Son of Man to be betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. It's time to go. My betrayer is here. I was there when that young rabbi came to my garden. I was putting away my tools and preparing to go home, but I let him be. He seemed so sad so scared. It wasn't my business. I finished up my tasks and began to leave when suddenly I heard a loud cry of anguish. I turned and saw the young rabbi on his knees, sobbing and alone, lifting his hands to the heavens, praying more earnestly than I've ever seen a person pray. I couldn't tear my eyes from him. After some time, he gathered himself and walked to where those who had come with him were sleeping under a tree. He started shouting angrily, though I couldn't make out his words, and they started awake. He went away to pray again, and almost as soon as he left them, they fell back to sleep. He was all alone. There was no one to comfort him to pray with him. So I did. I got on my knees right where I was and I prayed to God, Lord, comfort your suffering servant. Be with him in his agony and strengthen him for the journey ahead. Encourage those who follow him to keep watch for any opportunity to serve you. Help us all Remember the poor, the sick, and the dying. Fill our hearts with compassion for those the world casts into the ditch. I never met your servant, but I heard that he stands for justice and peace. Praise to you, O God, for sending him to be with us, for sending him to teach us, for sending him to show us how to love. We need him so desperately right now. Save us, O oh God. Our futures are so uncertain and it's so easy to lose hope. The only other words I have are the words I once heard that young rabbi pray during a sermon on a mountain. Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We've heard again the story of how the last week of his life began. We've tried to see him through the eyes of those who were there, who saw him and followed him into the hopes and fears and gathering shadows of those days. So we are here. And now we gird ourselves to follow where that week leads. He asked us to stay awake with him, to pray with him, and to follow him, to love, to courage, to sacrifice and anguish, and then to life, to life. So our service now begins. Let us go forth into this next week of our lives. Let us go remembering that he came, that we might have life and have it abundantly. Let us go resolved as always to let love be genuine, to hold fast to what is good, to be ardent in spirit, to rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering and persevere in prayer to live in harmony with one another and in so far as possible to live peaceably with all. For the peace of God, which passes all our understanding, is stirring among us even now, wherever we are, even in this particular world, in this particular week. May it keep your hearts and minds in the steadfast love of God. Keep them in the sacrificial love of Jesus Christ. Keep them in the enlivening love of the Holy Spirit. This day, this night, tomorrow, and even forevermore. Amen.